What's up, y'all? Welcome back. Today we're out in Dallas, Texas, filming with some folks from Vegas, baby. We are, we're actually getting out with some influencers from out of state. You guys are usually fishing like Lake. You, you mentioned Lake Mead is extremely low right yeah. now out in Vegas. Yeah. Uh, by the way, we got we got Travis and we got Bailey out here with us today. And uh, yeah, what else is out there though? You mentioned another lake that y'all are fishing. Uh, yeah, Lake Mojave. Lake it's a Mojave. Big smallmouth fishery. Super clear water, like 40 foot visibility insane so they're fishing big lakes but they don't have a lot of opportunity to hit ponds it doesn't sound like i remember when i went to vegas i was looking for stuff on fish brain app you know me and i couldn't find nothing man no water so uh we're gonna try and treat them to some big bass down here in texas we just had a storm earlier today we're gonna throw some top water i'm gonna throw some top water to start uh, i brought all kinds of baits though we're just rigging up and we're gonna get things kicked off we're starting off in this canal because immediately i told you guys let's meet in that neighborhood across the street they got like one cast in and y'all got the boot from the constable. Yeah. Literally got kicked out right off the bat. So anyways, let's get the GoPro rolling. We're gonna see what they want today. It might be a pond hopping adventure because I don't know if they're gonna be hitting in here. Uh, I just, I see a couple people on the bank. So hopefully they're catching. They've been here uh, for the whole 10, 15 minutes we've been rigging up. So there's promise. Uh, we got some top waters though. I think I'm gonna be breaking out the ploppers and the buzz baits and we'll see what hits. I, I got some new frogs as well. We're just gonna run through the whole arsenal. And if they won't hit top water, we got a lot of other stuff we can try. So just stay tuned, man. We got tons of rigs over here. Let's get to working. I should probably throw the popping frog just because it's a little breezy, but I wanted to break out this new thing. Man. I saw that, dude. I was I was watching that. I was about to say, dude, get out of here. You got one already? What is that, first cast, Trev? Yeah. Jeez, dude. Right. Y'all need to chill. That's bad luck, first cast. You can't do that. Oh, you know what? I didn't cut these legs, so I haven't been able to walk this one as good. That's looking good. Y'all, I'm starting off with the tataki frog. It just released. I was going to do a how to walk a frog video, uh, and I'm still going to. So stick around for that. Subscribe if you ain't, and you want to learn how to walk these puppies. But I'm going to trim the legs a little bit. I like to do that to get a, a... It helps you start the walk a little bit faster, in my experience. I've heard that from a lot of folks. Some people even like to cut them like kind of offset, like different lengths. So they'll trim the legs down, like one shorter than the other. Uh, just to get that walk started, it seems to help. I'm kind of like OCD. I like to keep them kind of the same length, but at the same time, I don't like to keep them that full length that they come stock from the factory. So let me just chop these down a hair. And uh, yeah, we're going to try this all over again. Oh, oh, oh. I thought you had another bite. So this is the latest frog from 10,000 fish, by the way. The thing is extra sick. I might've cut those a little too short. They're a little short, that's okay. Uh, <laughs> tataki frog, it's got some texture on the top, a little like port on top so you can get the water out of there nice and easy. Uh, you shouldn't be getting too much water in there anyways just because of how sealed this frog is. And it's a walking style, so it's got that pointed nose and it's designed to be walked so you can kind of keep it in the strike zone a little bit longer and keep it working in some extremely thick cover, pads, grass, stuff like that. That uh, the, the popping frog, you really want to fish more on grass edges and open water type scenarios when there's a little bit more chop. But this guy right here, great for fishing some thick cover. So hopefully we can find some of that to demonstrate. Let me get these legs in the bag here and we're going to make some casts and uh, pinpoint what these fish are after today. Yeah, this walk is starting super quick now that I cut those legs. It makes it so much easier. It's just less resistance uh, with those full length legs. So when you're trying to walk those frogs, I think cutting them down definitely helps. It'll get your confidence up. Because once you start it, it's easy to keep it going. It's just kind of starting it sometimes. The frog just comes right at you and you got to get the pops just right and then you're in business. We've both been throwing the frog. I almost want to tie on the plopper just to see if maybe a little more disturbance gets their attention. But at the same time, you throw the buzz bait, I'll throw the frog and we'll see if anything happens here. Bailey, with your arm, did that happen when you were young or like? like oh, really? Yes, sir. When did you start fishing? When you were really young or no? Uh, like. Yeah, when I was... Oh! No! Okay, when you were younger... <laughs> so basically how it works yep. is I, I tuck it in. Bam. Use a little thing and I... Uh, Done like dinner, it, dude. Like that, yeah. that is so sick. Holy smokes. Have you ever like lost some rods and stuff? Like working some baits and then all of a sudden a big and hits or no? Yeah, like have they taken that thing right out your hand? Because that's got to be like, oh shoot. Just about. Yeah. Just about lost the DC reel. This one. Just about lost the DC reel. Hey, us Texans, we're known for losing DC reels, man. I don't know what happens, but all my buddies all over the side of the kayaks and stuff, just those DCs are gone. All right, let's keep working this. Trav got his first hit on the old buzz bait. That's with the saucy swimmer on the back, by the way, a little 3.3 inch. So he's got some extra kick and action over there. Uh, I'm still rocking the frog. We're all getting hits though. Everyone's had bites today. So, uh, we just got to... We gotta secure the bag, man. We gotta bring one to the bank. So give us a second. I mean, they seem to be up shallow right now feeding. So with this storm that just passed, I imagine it's kind of pushing some insects and some bugs just down into the uh, down into this canal that would normally be kind of hanging out up here, right? 
and so they get trapped and those fish are just looking to ambush those so, so what happens is like those smaller fish like the bluegill they're eating those insects the bass probably are too but what happens is when those bluegill start to get active and they feed then all of a sudden here comes the bass wanting to feed on the bluegill so everything could just be up shallow and uh, like i'm seeing dragonflies right here as soon as they hit the surface there's definitely a little bluegill that are going after them all throughout this canal and so when this frog hits the water when the buzzbait hits the water they think it's just the same thing it's another insect or it's, an, it's a frog and they're just smashing it Woo! he's going by the grass edge oh my gosh i had high hopes for that one so are you a fan of those gomexus handles and i like them obviously for like the styling and stuff like for the pictures and just something unique and different uh like as far as performance i mean it's almost like it's a handle you know so uh, honestly it's for me it's more about the customization i think um in many ways like the most recent set i got you know there's there's purpose the lightweight and all those things I love the look of yeah them. and so you know some like they're, they're purpose built and see that's the thing is every one of them is different too so like there's those larger ones i have like on my tranks 400 like there's there's a huge point in that too you know you got more kind of cranking power and torque because you got that larger handle so it's like it just depends like this is very similar to a stock setup but of course the feeling is different you got larger grips to hang on yeah. to so i think there's performance values for sure but at the same time i mean i i was like okay those handles are going to look dope with the guggen rods and they like like how cool is that combo yeah just to have something a little bit different what is what i wanted that? this uh, is probably an slx yeah okay. most of my left handers are the slx's are you guys like uh I, i've got a channel um travis is pretty big on instagram for sure yeah we're just messing around trying to catch us a couple they're actually in town from vegas so yeah. they don't get to fish many ponds it's kind of it's kind of funny like we're spo we're spoiled hey i appreciate that man thank you so much Good luck. i'll see you around hey how's it going <laughs> You, that's so awesome <laughs> nice to meet you what's your name joe martinez oh pleasure to meet you man right, you out here you're riding the bike though you're not fishing today or are you dude, dude. oh i see you check check out my rig man. oh my god don't tell anybody about this no man. how crazy is that that's what I do, man. thank you you too oh i have a texas rig perfect awesome. spot number two here we are y'all here we are hey travis hooked it up with the hat and shades dude because i left mine at home today wood figure so thank you we are uh actually gonna hit this like puddle literally Literally, the square footage on this thing is like less than a, uh, it's probably like the size of a studio apartment. I mean, it's microscopic right here off the side of this bridge. It's just kind of like a runoff, and somehow these bass are thriving in this little thing. So hopefully, we can prove it to you with a fish catch. You're not going to believe this when you see it. It's like, I guess you might even call it a little creek or something, but needless to say, we're walking right up. Check this place out. Go! Yeah, it might, not, might be a better idea to wait on this one. Ford's pulling up. They probably don't know us, but we'll just say they're fans. <laughs> they gave us the double hump. This is what we're fishing? This is what we're fishing. Dude. <laughs> oh, no. My pool's bigger than Roadside? this. <laughs> he said my pool's bigger than this. Now, don't laugh if we pull out something decent. And if we get no bites, then I'm just a liar. It looks a lot different. They've like cleared this out. Yeah, just stand here and throw over. Perfect. Oh, what a cast. Dude, if you don't get a bite right here, Work it nice and slow. Right yeah, I've caught him. I've actually had him on the hook before. It was crazy. Try and get him. Bring it by his nose. Did he eat it? There's a couple gar. Oh, he's eating dude, there's a couple gar. Get him to eat that thing, dude. How crazy would that be? Oh, come on. All right, let me see. I'm going to get in here with you. First cast. First cast. <laughs> First cast. I wasn't lying. I was just filming them. We saw a couple gar in here. And then my first cast with the Kraken Crawl, which is now a Ned rig. <laughs> Got him. See you, bud. Thank you. All right, I'm going to start cutting it if you're cool with it. Oh, I thought you had it. Family of one wheelers, that was nuts. We're moving on by the way, next spot. All right, spot number three. I go oh, it's drained. Oh, oh my gosh, I've never seen it like this. Y'all, the spot is like gone. There's no water here. I bet you they're so hungry. Like if you guys come across a bass's face, it's gonna eat. I fished here like a week ago and it was full. Dude, water, all water. Like 
What? Crazy, man. Y'all don't even know how many times I've been snagged on that tree right there. That was like the good cast over there where all those reeds in the trees are. Now it can't even get in there. But let's go down the street. We'll try the other pond. <laughs> on to spot number four. Chatterbait is what my uh, is what all the guys were throwing when I brought them here recently, and they were like smoking them on the chatterbait. Got him! Got him! Yep. Yes, sir. Nice, dude. Nice. Right off the aerator. Let's go. Let's go, baby. Texas bass. Come on, baby. First Texas bass. Let's go. Let's go. Nice. Heck yeah. All right. <laughs> How sick is that? First Texas fast and it's my birthday weekend. So sick. Happy, Happy belated birthday right Thank there, you. bro. I appreciate it. Nice. Not bad. Let's go. Thanks. No way. No way. Is that the aerator? Yeah. Okay, I was about to say. Yeah, the, you, you, you might have lost the bait right there. Because <laughs> uh, that thing, it likes to get you. Oh, yeah. Dude, how sick, Bailey. Let's yeah. go. Get hey, let's get a picture. Yeah. Let's get a picture, all of us. Hey, See you, bud. Dude, he's cruising along the bank. Look, right here. He's just cruising. I'm rigging up this wobblehead jig. Check this thing out. I just grabbed these off of Carl's Bait and Tackle. I want to say this is probably a three quarter ounce. I wanted something heavy. The whole point in this guy right here is to actually swim your bottom baits that you're normally rigging up like on a Texas rig or even like a shaky head, something along those lines. So you got this football head jig that you can just work over rock and, and just along the bottom here. If it's pretty grassy, I wouldn't recommend it, but definitely rock or a hard bottom like we've got in some of the areas of these ponds here. I'm going to be swimming this crack and crawl along the bottom and you get more of a reaction strike. You can also work it, I could work it slowly, almost like a Texas rig. And so I can kind of bounce back and forth between a couple different techniques and hopefully link up. But the whole point in this setup right here is to swim those bottom baits along the bottom, almost like throwing a square bill crankbait that you would be bumping along the bottom, but with a different presentation, something like your craws, your creatures. And so you can get those bass that are in the mood for something a little bit different this summer. Let's see. I'm just gonna creep along the bottom. I'm bumping rock right here. Feels so good. Got him. Feels big. All right. Oh. All right. He's not huge, but he hit the wobble head just about like uh, 10 feet out, y'all. There we go. Swim in the crack and crawl. Sprayed lettuce. No. Oh, oh, oh. Quick release. That'll do it. Well, nice little two pounder. We'll take it. <laughs> Recently, I did try and throw this and I caught a fish on it on Lake Austin. The bass ate it as soon as it hit the surface, so it's kind of lame. Um, it wasn't like fishing it like I was there, which is really how you're supposed to use the bait. It was just kind of like I landed on his head and it was luck of the draw. Sometimes in the summer they're stacked up in one area, so maybe he was just the first one to it, but there's a couple other bass in that same spot about 15 feet in front of us here, 10, 15 feet in front of us. Let's see if that is the truth. That was a sick bite. I like this rig. He might have been way out there and just decided to eat it last minute. So I just casted it out. I let it fall to the bottom. I'm just a slow and steady reel. My rod tip is pointed straight at the bait. I'm not like at an angle because when I feel that little tick against the, the reel right there, when I feel a little resistance, you can just really whack it. And I'm also throwing it on a muscle rod. So this is pretty, basically a seven and a half foot rod. It's a heavy extra fast. You got to wham those hook sets because we do have a thicker hook on this thing right here. This is three quarter ounce, remember. So it's a big stout hook. You really got to penetrate the lip. So again, spool still open, letting it fall, letting it fall, letting it fall. Just hit the bottom. Tighten it up. Let's go ahead and start cranking. Nice and slow though. You want to maintain bottom contact with this bait. See if we can get another. No way. That looked good too, dude. First Texas bass right here for Trav. Oh, okay. Okay. He's not huge, but he's not small either. He's not a dink. Look at that. Nice dude. Are we all throwing spray lettuce crack and crawls up right now? That's I think we are. Going, dude. dude. That's where the bite's at. So sick. Beautiful fish. Got a first Texas bass for both these boys today. And, and I think uh, I think Bailey said it was his first trip to Texas. First, it's his first time flying. Was yesterday. First time flying, dude. How crazy! Lots of first. A lot of first, man. man. Drop some thumbs up, y'all, for that. How sick! I was hoping we were gonna get on him today, cause honestly, after storms out here, it it turns a lot of these fish off. Look at these bluegill roaming the bank. Uh, I I. <laughs> I fish a lot of ponds out here in Texas <laughs> and they tend to slow down after that rain. And I think we would have caught more fish today so far if it hadn't, yeah. but uh, definitely they are biting now. So you got them. Oh, nice. Back to back, dude. That's two. Woo. Sick. Second one for Travis in like two minutes, y'all. Holy smokes. Crack and cross getting her done. Those hammer hooks ain't letting go either. Look at that. No, they're not got them past the barb. They're really not. <laughs> 
If y'all trying to grab any of this gear, by the way, GuggenSquad.com, code Weston. Get you some fishies just like Trav over here. <laughs> that goes for the uh, spray lettuce bandito bugs. That goes for the rods. Uh, so basically any baits we've been throwing today, GuggenSquad.com. Save 10% though. Got him. Got him. Got him. Got him. Let's go. Come on. What are we working with here? Bandit. Oh, on, did bandit. you tighten the drag? Oh, oh no. dang. I was going to say it hadn't come up. It was looking like it might have been pretty heavy. Okay. Unfortunate. It happens though. But like when you tightened it, it was like, <laughs> I was like, oh snap, it was loose. Yeah, that was the problem. He just ate it, but you probably didn't really hook him. It was probably in his mouth though for a minute. And then that's one thing I see lunkers do a lot and I've learned from and I'll do it on occasion. Like if I don't feel like I got the hook set, you, he sets it again. Yeah, like if he's got one on a chatter bait and he's like, I think he got, he'll hit it again. And I'm like, what a smart move, you know? I have brought out, uh, that video has done really well too over time. I brought out the deeper sonar here, that castable sonar. And like, is that that depth thing? Yeah. It's like you tie it onto your rod and you cast it out there. And we saw like where it looked like there was fish here. And so we cast it out and dude, we were on them. We're just like straight out like 30, 40 feet. And we were just throwing like a uh, lunker logs. Oh. Oh, you did. You did. Chatterbait. Let's go. Come on. Oh, Come on. Come on. Oh, he's trying. He's probably, he's probably two. That's looking good. Yep. Yep. Thank nice you, one, dude. A little skinny almost. Otherwise, it would for sure Ow. be like two. Switching things up, y'all. I'm just going to go weightless lunker log. Try something a little bit different. The boys are walking up ahead. We got a Texas rig and a chatterbait in the water. And I definitely rigged that worm up a little too scrunched. You see how it's kind of like at an angle? So I'm going to try that again. Poking a little bit further up the worm. And now it's more straight and narrow. That's what we need. Oh, snap. Here we go. What do we got here? <laughs> I think that is the biggest of the day. Biggest of the day. Got <laughs> Did not even feel it. I just saw the line swimming. Did not even feel it. That was awesome. Get back on in there. Oh, let's go. There he is. <laughs> Quietly over here with like a six pounder. <laughs> Number two. Number two, Number dude. Two for me. Crushing it. Yeah. <laughs> Holy little, smokes. Little upgrade from the first one, I think. Yep. For bigger. sure. Was he like way out there or was he no, close he to was, you? He was right in front, right here. Oh, hanging out by the and drain. I cast it way out and I seen where it got deep. Yep. And I just let him, I slowly dropped it and I see my line start doing this. <laughs> <laughs> nice. There you go. See ya. That's awesome. I don't know if you know or not, but you got a screw in your tire. Yeah, uh, actually the tire pressure was low yesterday, so I just filled all these up. Thank you for pointing it out. Um, <laughs> I just filled them all up yesterday, so I got to go to oh. discount and get them done. Y'all, we are calling it for the day. We had a ton of fun with the boys from Vegas. Yeah, Travis yeah. Bailey, it was an absolute blast. Hopefully we can link up again before y'all fly back out. It's sounding like we might have that potential, but we're wrapping it up. We hit some of our favorite ponds, and actually we're at the ponds that I originally fished with John B at in the past. I'm going to try and link that video in case you guys want to see my first interaction with any of the Guggen members ever uh, after starting this whole YouTube thing. So had a blast with you guys. Hopefully we can get out again before you leave and we'll catch you guys on the next one. Drop some comments. Let me know what you'd like to see. Till then. Peace.